Hi, my name is R.Z. Jurok. I'm the host of OzBuzz, where we chat with exciting, eclectic influencers in and around the real estate industry. This morning, we're privileged to be joined by Sharan Siti from the Teen Share Group, a master of innovation, and in his newest vision, the Flamingo High Rise in a City Within a City. Welcome, Sharon. Good morning, Ozzy. How are you, sir? I'm doing really well. You're looking great in front of that new vision of yours. <laughs> well, it, it is an exciting project and uh, uh, very, very, very proud of it, uh, where we've gone, where we come from, where we are today, and uh, especially the whole concept is excites me every day. I wake up bright eyes. Well, I find that really interesting because, you know, I've had the privilege of, of knowing you for a little bit of time. And uh, I, I know I used to be the judge of the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board Awards. And you were there every year. Either you were nominated or you won one, one thing for innovation, for uh, classy buildings and so on. And then, of course, you have built, I mean, how many units have you built in the, in the Surrey area? Uh, about 760 units so far. Uh, but that's what was already built. Yeah, and that's crazy. I know that uh, some of these buildings, like the venue, and the Maverick and the Q5. I mean, my I bought some units, my partner bought some units, my daughter bought some units, our company bought some units, and we really were very pleased with, with all that you had originally promised that you over delivered. So I'm really excited to now talk about the idea of uh, something new, a uh, high rise uh, in, uh, in the General Volley area. I'm really glad you like what you bought and what you invested in uh, there as well, because that's what makes us feel really happy. And uh, uh, there's a sense of accomplishment for ourselves as well. Uh, not as you looking at you as investors, it's more of a good feeling that what, we, what we're doing is actually the right thing. And uh, um, uh, I, th I think every day when one wakes up and they're doing the right thing and their satisfaction delivered on the other end, it's a, certainly is, is an um, uplifting experience. Well, I think your whole group, your teen share team has been together for a while and you've gone through uh, a great experiences, but you also have really a vision always when you start a new building. I know that when you started the micro suite uh, building, everybody gave you a hard time saying, oh, who would want to buy those small suites? And yet you sold, what, sold them out very, very quickly. Yeah, actually they call them shoe boxes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so basically what happened is, I mean, uh, the, the concept was uh, arrived from the part that we had so many people on our database, but we couldn't sell them anything because their income level wasn't that point. And so what thought, you know what, how can we uh, uh, give them some piece of real estate where obviously they want to buy something, that's why they come and see us, that's why they won't register with us. What can we do? So we did a good amount of serving to find out what their income levels are and what they what they like what they don't like and what bottom line was basically was their income their income could not sustain something in the 250 in those days i mean 250 doesn't buy you much to these days but it couldn't sustain the, the, the mortgages they couldn't they couldn't uh, they couldn't live uh, with that sort of uh, income level so they, and everybody wants to get into uh, real estate they want all want to have a piece of the action and I think it's as a human nature, we all want our piece of um, uh, where we can actually uh, call it a home. Doesn't matter what it is, it's shack or doesn't really matter. I think we are just like that. We are, uh, we are, we are, uh, and so what we did was we re-engineered back and say, what can we afford to give them? What it came down to was the amount of square footage we give them. And so uh, after probably about a re one year of research, Try to come up with a, a concept which would be 300 square feet or in that price range where they could afford them and uh, did a study worldwide honestly it was a uh, such a beautiful experience in that because you know i i went to here to hong kong uh, china india i mean yeah. europe and what how people live in in a uh, in a society where number one is affordable unaffordable number two it's congested they need to live in that location wise because that's where they work so it, it boiled down to we could only give them about 300 square feet 
And now we had to design suites which were livable. Yeah. It's not a matter of uh, just give it the yeah. 300 square feet, here you go, you know, make yourself comfortable. But it was actually, you know, making sure they have a kitchen, making sure they have a bathroom, they make sure they have laundry facilities, and they have a bedroom area and living area, and they have a bit of an outdoor area, which was our deck. And, uh, you know, providing that, that extra thought, putting that extra thought into design of it certainly paid off. Um, and, you know, when the show suite was finished, it was pretty incredible uh, that I brought in so many people and I asked them how many square feet they think it was. And everybody came in from about 450 to 550 square feet, but we had only at 300 square feet units. But that's why you also, you won in 2017, you won the Ovation Award for Excellence in creating innovating housing choices. Because it isn't like to say, just create a square feet. You have to make it livable and you have to make it exciting. And if I walk in and I feel like I'm in 450 square feet, then you've done a great job by making me feel good. I know the building. It's always amazing to me how, you know, it's it sold out very, very quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, again, uh, regarding the award itself, we never do anything to win an award. We do it because what we want to do, what we think is the right thing to do as a developer. Um, and I, I don't mind admitting, I don't need to work anymore. But yeah. the thing is, I do it because I feel that there is a need for somebody like me out there to pioneer some of these time of designs and provide housing, especially in Wally area, where it's, it, it seemed like um, for so many years, it was beaten down all the time. It seemed like it was always under underprivileged people, under uh, under uh, privileged people lived in that area, and we didn't like that part of it. Uh, coming from a working class a family um, and working class myself, you know, uh, I was used to be a machinist, pizza delivery guy. I mean, you name it, I've done it, like a lot of people have, and it was it's a satisfying experience to come up with a solution to a problem which nobody else had before. And trust me, nobody did, because when we presented it to the bank and the bank says, no, nah, uh, you know, we, we can't fund this project. Uh, and go to CMHC, no, we we don't think it's, that doesn't meet our mandate, which is 320 square feet, 319 square feet. Uh, so it became a challenge, but I was uh, a strong believer in what I had produced then I just have to fight for what is right. And at the end, we, we, we got everybody saying, yeah, it's a good product. Well, they say that the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And I noticed that the city of West Vancouver just approved the, the, uh, the, to, to innovate uh, uh, smaller suites in the 350 square feet range. So I think it's your company. Your, the value that you have in tin share and your brand, you know, uh, is that you research and you're trying to do the best for the buyers and, and trying to imagine how they feel living in what you build. I, I think I've said it many, many times in, in many public forums as well as to uh, people as well. I don't build anything that I can't live in myself. I think it's very important for a developer to turn around and design the home housing that are comfortable because everybody has a hard day work or whatever they go home they need to be comfortable they need to have the very basic of uh, of what they need which is a kitchen the bathroom the living area you need all of that and if you you know if you design around what people needs are you got a good product no question and so that's so what do you think is the greatest impact that your group has I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know so certainly in Wally itself, we've had a big impact with the instigator of re uh, revitalization of Wally. Uh, when nobody believed in Wally, I believed in Wally. Um, uh, when when we started building in it, uh, there was a lot of confusion at what the air, what could be built into the area. But I'd, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Colin Boza, who basically gets spent a couple of hours of his time, who basically, who I went to him and I said, listen, I just bought this piece of property. 
and everybody's told me uh, I'm a fool in doing that, but, but I, I, I believe in this area and I think we can do this. And this is what I want to build. So him and I sat down and, and sort of kind of, he guided me, Chairman, this is what you need to do to, to bring in affordable housing into that area. And since then, I've never looked back and always thank to Colin Boza to what he's, uh, the guidance he gave me initially. And so many other people who encouraged me to continue on the path. Of course, the naysayers will always be there. <laughs> yeah. And the reality is, I mean, they're, they're gone. I mean, I, you know, uh, but- Always is, pop up, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think the, uh, the revitalization of Wally is probably the, uh, uh, my dream project, I should say. Yeah, and it's no question about it. And every building that you put there, you know, I mean, the last one, the Q5, uh, that uh, myself and my investors were happy to invest in. I think, what, what did it sell out in? What, eight hours or nine, nine hours? Or, you know, it was yes. clearly hit the spot. And I think that almost uh, because you care about, uh, uh, you know, what happens to once the unit is sold, it's because of that reason it's, that's why you're successful. Now, your new world that you're envisioning is something entirely different because it's like a city within a city. It's the Flamingo Project, which is a high rise of some 357 units. Uh, that seems like very exciting to me. It is. I just want to go back to um, the, uh, uh, the consumer itself, the buyers, investors. And, you know, the one thing we take a huge amount of pride in uh, customer satisfaction. Um, when, just because you bought a unit from us and you taken the key, you paid me the money for it, doesn't mean we go away. We want to make sure that you are happy with the product for years to come. And we go back in and if there's any uh, anything that happens or people don't understand, my staff goes back and make sure it's done properly. So back to a city within a city. Uh, yeah, it's it's a concept which has been used worldwide. I'm not the, uh, you know, I can't own it exclusively, but a city within a city. So having the first development, which is the high rise office space and the commercial itself is a city within a city because you, people can work there, they can live there and they can shop downstairs as well. So, you know, if, if you have a small company, you bought into my office space, your workers can, buy into or rent into a high rise. Yeah. If they want a, a meal, uh, they want to have a coffee, they can go downstairs and grab that coffee and meet some friends downstairs. That's, that's a city within a city. Well, it's the, the being together very, you know, you have commercial, you have, you have uh, residential together, and then it's all built around a beautiful little mall area. You know, it's like, it's a lifestyle that you're selling, but you're also what, within seven minutes of city center, right? You're within seven minutes of the, the SkyTrain. Uh, you know, you're, you're 15 minutes, and I guess it's where the 15 minutes come from. The furthest interesting thing away is 15 minutes only, whether it's Simon Fraser University or so many different things are all within walking distance. Yeah, uh, uh, again, the 15 minutes uh, city is basically, uh, you should be able to get to your daily needs within a 15 minutes walk or bike ride. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that is, um, I think we all strive for it. Uh, it's also, it's very good for your health as well. Like if you're, you don't need to take a car, you don't need to go down to the park, get, get a car, get in the car, go drive two minutes to go and pick up something, come back. Why not just take a brisk walk and pick up some groceries or go for a coffee, go to the restaurant, um, and, and so uh, everything within 15 minutes walking distance is a huge success, success simply because you don't need a car. I know that a few years ago you made speeches at our investor conferences, you know, and uh, you always hammered on that you had to have a TOD and we always were wondering what the heck is a TOD and it's of course a transit oriented development. And this is what this is. I mean, it, yes, you may be in a city within a city, but if you have to go to downtown Vancouver, well, just stop into the step into the SkyTrain. And that whole network of SkyTrain is going, so also going to grow throughout Surrey and Langley. And you're really in the center of the universe. You're not just buying uh, a gorgeous condo with spectacular views and vistas. 
you have a, a lifestyle all around you, no question about it. Yeah, I think more and more people, especially the young people, uh, millennials are coming into uh, using public transportation. Uh, it's becoming more convenient to use public transportation. And uh, because we are within you know, five, seven minutes walking distance of the, the Gateway SkyTrain station, it makes it very convenient. We, we do have a lot of people who live in our communities now who actually use the, the uh, SkyTrain. And I think yeah. having that um, makes a big difference. So transport oriented development, uh, it's, it's uh, getting a big uh, uh, wards all around the world where people say, you know what, it's environmentally friendly. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, I think you and me are still used to driving cars, but I think even, you, you know, we are at, at certain times we're thinking, you know what, what if we lived somewhere close by where I don't have to drive a car? I can just go to a restaurant, have a drink. I don't have to worry about driving the car back home again. And what in, and you also make it easy if, if you have an electric car, you have plugins for that. You know? Yeah, the, we are actually uh, probably one of the, uh, the only ones out there right now, which we're taking. Uh, not only we have, uh, I think it's more than 50% of our uh, parking stalls will be uh, um, with a charger. Uh, but we actually have a shared car program in the building as well. So I believe there's two cars that's going to be stationed in the building itself. So if you don't own a car, don't worry about it. There's a couple of cars waiting downstairs. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, you could uh, yeah, get one of those. And, you know, I don't use one. I never use one. But I know some of my nieces and nephews, they're using them. They love it. Sure. They love it. Because they don't have to worry about the car. They don't have to worry about the insurance. They don't have to worry about the gas. Yeah. It's, it, it's just, a, just a beautiful way of doing it. So when you have two cars at the bottom, and if you have an electric car, you've got a charger down there, it's, it's, it's all geared up for future. Well, the way the building is situated, there's quite a few of view suites there as well, you know, because you're in view, you can see the river, you can see the mountains. Yeah. You'll be able to see the views from about the fourth floor upwards. Um, we, we already, like, in, as you know, in, through our last projects, uh, you know, you bought uh, units over at uh, Maverick, uh, Rob yeah. bought units as well. I mean, look at the views from there. You can see the river, you can see the North Shore. Yeah, that's you know, right. It's just amazing. And uh, we are, uh, elevation-wise, ground elevation-wise, we are actually one of the highest points in Surrey City Center. So it's, uh, it's even more better views that we ever thought we were going to get out of them. And uh, um, uh, yes, views are uh, going to be extraordinary. So how many years was this building a gleam in your eyes? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. I started, uh, 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 we bought the land in Wally 16 years ago and we've been bright eyes ever since. Sure, there's been challenges. We've, we've had, uh, uh, number one, resistance from uh, various people. You know, it's a bad area. Uh, but uh, every morning, I, I tell you, uh, Ozzy, I get up, I'm excited what's happening out there. And uh, uh, over the years, we've been buying more and more land. And uh, as, as you know, you know, uh, last year, we bought a, one of the, uh, I think, trophy property, which is uh, called Wally Station, right on the corner of uh, 108 and King George, southwest corner. It's a pretty, a very iconic property. I, I think it's... I, a trophy property and put, getting that together with my the current uh, assets right now and building that out is going to be absolutely amazing. Well, and I think the, the fact is that Yale Town used to be not a very popular area in Vancouver. You know, I mean, everybody said, oh, Yale Town. Today, it's one of the most desirable places in the world you can live. Or whether it's a Mount Pleasant, you know, they, they, they had sort of a a funny connotation, the same with Wally, but it's changing daily. And part of the good thing is that you can go there, be part of a brand new community and have prices that are really affordable. What is your starting point in the building? Um, uh, going back to your first point uh, of the Yale Town, I remember way back uh, uh, when I first moved to Canada, yet nobody wanted to go to Yale Town. <laughs> and and then the investors started buying into it. Now it's people like us, our age group, who want to move into it because it's a walkable community. Exactly. It's, 
it's it's there so it's it's um, uh, pretty amazing um to to what's happening in there yeah and there's no question that a new hotel the the new library so much uh, the asian piece so much is going on all within that 15 minute walking distance and if you don't want to tell them i'm going to tell them the prices start as low as 299,000. i know i'm sure it's not the whole building but you you can look at some affordable units and they'll probably also from an investor point of view, uh, they're smaller units and uh, we need rental units as well. So, so the idea when we're looking at immigration is going to be 400,000 people this year, as was planned, even though there was a pandemic. Over 200,000 are in, in, uh, in Canada already. And most of these immigrants are going to come, you know, into the big cities like Vancouver and, uh, and Toronto. And when they come to Vancouver, where they're going to live is likely Surrey, which at 1,500 people a month's uh, growth is going to always need that accommodation. Well, uh, you're, you're perfectly correct, uh, but the numbers are wrong. So it's actually 450,000 people we can expect this year. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's pretty mind boggling. So I, you know, I've had a number of discussions with various groups and, you know, they, they talk about where the hell are we going to put them? And, the, you know, with the, the government doing a research, they all of a sudden have woken up. Hey, we are not building enough homes in Canada. We're building roughly about 50% of what is required for the current population, let alone the new immigrants. Yeah. So four to 50,000 people coming in within the year plus students. So Trudeau yeah. has already committed to bring in as many students as the universities can cope with. Because yeah. that's our next level, uh, next generation of new Canadians. And don't forget the Can Hong Kong Canadians. Um, uh, their life is being made more and more difficult every day. Uh, more, uh, uh, more restrictions. And uh, we, we are already seeing some of that happening right now where the Hong Kong people are starting to move back, uh, back to Canada, because this is much safer and much nicer place to live. Yeah, no question. And that's what we need, right? Values go where people go and they're sure as heck are going to Vancouver and they're sure as heck going into the Fraser Valley. And we're looking at what you're creating there. I'm excited about it. I mean, it's a big project and this is just the first, the first part of a multi-year plan, right? I mean, these are 357 units in Tower One. There's more that you're planning. Yes. So um, the first Flamingo Tower, uh, again, has uh, uh, 374 residential unit. We have about 55,000 uh, square feet of Estrada office space. And then we have about 25,000 square feet of commercial space. So all in one, the second phase will have, um, uh, I think it's close to about uh, 700 units in total in the two buildings. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we will not be building uh, phase two and three. We'll actually be moving over to Wally Station, which is over 500 units, wow. plus plus about quarter million square feet of office space, and then office uh, the uh, commercial plaza at the bottom. And uh, uh, because it's uh, it's going to clean up the whole area, get rid of any of the old buildings, and I think it would be so much nicer. As you know, Flamingo Land is already. A vacant Flamingo Hotel were demolished uh, about two years yeah. ago. Yeah. No, it's no question that it's exciting and, and you're part of a, you buy into that development, you're part of a, a really centerpiece. Uh, when is, how long does it take to build such a big project? You know, hope, uh, I've been given the timeline, so we have, um, uh, that the Flamingo one will be finished spring of 2025. So the neat thing is if you're an investor and if you have 20% down, you can wait for the market as the market has been <laughs> helping the real estate investor all along for the last 20 years. You can have some time before you, uh, you have to come up with the extra dollars. So that's, uh, well, that's an asset yeah, too. That's right. It's, it's leverage for the uh, consumer, for the investor, it's, it's leverage at 20% down. You got three, three and a half years, uh, nothing. Just wait for the market to shift. And for, uh, you, for you to do your magic. <laughs> yeah, sad part for me is that I've sold the, I fixed the, the price of what's selling. 
what has sold. So I have a, a revenue which is fixed, but unfortunately for me is the cost of construction, cost of labor is going up on a daily basis. It's, it's amazing. Since uh, a year ago, the cost of construction going up are between 15 to 17%. Yeah. And then we have supply pressures as well. You have to really plan well, almost like two or three years ahead to have all the materials available for you. Yeah, I mean, even a Q5, uh, I mean, last week we ended up having to buy roofing material because the, uh, the supplier of the roofing material said, you better buy it now, otherwise you may not have roofing material when the building is ready for it. Yeah. So we're actually buying it and storing it in our warehouse. <laughs> it's a good thing we have a warehouse to store in. So we're going to storing it. So that's how we kind of hedge our market. But for the consumer, I mean, they're lucky in a position that they buy 20% down, they don't have to do anything. For me, it's, it's uh, uh, I, I'm, I need to sell a certain number of units to get the funding in place. That's, that's a known factor. And um, um, so it's a, sort of a, what do you do first? Do you turn around and build it? Because you need the pre, uh, but you don't have the pre-sale, you just pre-sell it, but then now your income is fixed. So it is a, a tough thing, but uh, we try to be very cautious uh, in, in what we do and try and predict certain things that uh, we don't come out um, in a negative hole. Well, and I think though, there's, if I hear you rightly, or maybe between the lines, buy early, right? Because with that many units, once you have your financing in order, maybe the prices won't be the same. Not that I'm, that I know anything, but it seems logical to me. But look, I thank you so much for your time. It's been a, an eye opener. I, I have always been astounded at, at some of the things that you did build. Uh, and like I said, my, me, my family, my investors, we always have been well, well, well served by buying something built by Tin Shear, led by Sharon City, no question about it. If anybody has any interest, we have contact information at the bottom in the information section. Do you have any final words on the market next year or the world at large of real estate? Yeah, I have two, two comments. Number one, if anybody is buying, they want to get in the front of the line and to buy the, um, uh, one of the 374 units, they better contact you first. Because as, as you know, you know, we all allow, always allow your group to come in the door first before anybody else does. Uh, it, Thank you. Big, well, the thing is, it's, it, you have a very good group of investors. They're solid. They, uh, they're smart. They're, uh, they see what we build and they follow us. Uh, I think last building we sold 40% of our building was sold to repeat clients, 40%. That's huge. Yeah. So awesome. not many people can say that. Uh, what do I see in the future? Um, I, uh, I mean, it's for a lot of people, it's kind of wait and see. For me, I'm gearing up to see, uh, to, to meet the demand of what's going to happen in the next few years. So we, that's the reason we've been buying land, more and more land, uh, not only here in Wally, but uh, we just bought another piece in uh, Parksville. Uh, we own a large development in Parksville right now, which is in the finishing stages. We own another eight and a half acres in uh, South Nanaimo, and are buying another 10 acres um, in uh, uh, Parksville as industrial as well. Um, because I, I think it's just gonna go uh, more simply because of population growth. The no question, of, no yeah. question about it. You're a yeah. believer and you take action on that belief. I've been believing that since we keep on printing money like crazy, that we're going to see a world that is going to be highly inflationary. I've been saying it for 20 years, uh, but now everybody can see it. And so things will be more expensive down the road. So everybody today that buys real estate is going to be well served. And you are proof positive of that. Sharon, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, as I said, anybody wants to have some contact information, more details, fine brochure, just look in the, in the text down below, click on it, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, this opportunity.